So today I'm going to answer a question I got, which is, what is the strangest guitar I own? And uh, I thought that was a great question. I thought, huh, I don't know what the strangest guitar I own is. And then I thought, well, why don't I try to, instead of narrow it down to one, why not see if I can find like four or five? The first one I'm going to show you is my Framus Television. The television is a reissue of a original Framus guitar called the Television, uh, probably back in the 60s. This guitar, this version, which has been modernized, is super thin. <laughs> it's like, reminds me of an Ibanez Sabre guitar or an S-series. Really super, super thin. I think other than maybe the centerpiece is pretty much hollow. This guitar is super light. This one has P90s, although they make it with humbuckers. And this guitar is kind of my go-to for that odd P90 rockin' sound. I just love to play. <laughs> This one is made in Germany. Uh, it is a team-built guitar, so it's not their craziest expensive, but it is a rather expensive instrument. This one is mahogany body with a mahogany neck, and then of course a maple cap. It has binding on the sides. There is no binding on the neck. This is a rosewood fretboard. We have medium jumbo frets, graphite, uh, graphite nut, uh, ratio tuning keys. Uh, they are by Graftech as well. Tone Pro's bridge, the P90s are Seymour Duncan's, volume and tone, and a three-way switch right here. So let me give you a sample of the neck pickup. The next strange guitar I have is called the Dead On 67 by Dan Electro. This is another guitar, kind of looks like the television I just had, and I like it for pretty much the same reasons. Very slim, very comfortable, definitely unique. This guitar uh, I just saw one day used and I thought, this is crazy. It is not what you think it is. It looks like the body's made of plastic or something, especially with this disc in the back. It is basswood. It's a satin orange or tangerine paint. The neck is maple with a rosewood fretboard. The uh, nut is aluminum which is nice. Uh, it's got some Cluson style, vintage style tuning keys. The bridge is my favorite part because it's screwed into the body, literally just with screws. It looks like somebody made it as an at-home project. The trim alarm can be switched to either side, so you could play it upside down or you could just put it up on top if you want. Some lipstick pickups, two volumes and two tone controls. The pickguard looks like it's made of metal. It's not, it's a plastic. Um, that has been treated to look like uh, aluminum. And this, of course, is some kind of mother of toilet seat, but what's really interesting is it's like a clear plastic pick guard over some kind of sheet that's underneath it, maybe stuck to the bottom. Very cool, very inexpensive. Uh, these guitars are out of production. And if it helps, this one is made in China. So it's a made in China instrument. So here is this guitar. <laughs> The next guitar is definitely different, as you can tell by the case. This is my Journey Acoustic. Now I know what you're thinking. Uh, I've done a video of a Journey Acoustic, but not this one. The video I did was of the collapsible travel guitar. And I was really impressed with that guitar. I couldn't believe how well it was put together, how it kind of fit in a little case. You could take it on over overhead on an airplane. But the reality is, is I don't take an acoustic when I travel. So um, I saw they made a composite acoustic guitar. And what's interesting is I had a Rain Song guitar for many years made of composites. and I loved having it, especially living where I live, where it's really hot. You can leave it in the car, you can take it places and not worry about you know the weather destroying it. 
and but it never sounded really good so some of the things i really like about this guitar is that although it is a composite instrument the nut is made of bone which i thought was a nice touch uh to kind of maybe anchor it same with the bridge to kind of maybe kind of make it a little bit less kind of bright and harsh um grover tuning keys on the guitar and it's an ultra small headstock which is designed to help kind of keep it compact it's also contoured on the side right here and contoured in the back so it's very comfortable it just kind of goes just like that and Well, keeping with the theme of carbon fiber, this is a guitar that I have used in videos before. This is my Parker Fly Mojo, Mojo Fly. And this guitar I've had for many, many years. This one is a custom one. Now, Parker is no longer in business, but when they did make guitars, this one was came out of a special order I did where I had them use a different headstock from their Dragonfly series so that it can hang on a wall hanger. So it's a little bit, a little bit larger than you're used to seeing on this style of guitar. This is a one-piece mahogany body and a one-piece mahogany neck that was joined together. One of the interesting things that you can do with a Parker Fly is, uh, is it's perfectly designed to be balanced when wearing it with your strap. And they demonstrate that by letting you kind of do this with your finger. <laughs> I always scare people when you do this, but this guitar is super, super light, as you can tell. And uh, it's perfectly designed to be balanced that way. Now, this one gets a lot of misconceptions that it's believed that it's a carbon fiber instrument or that it's plastic. It's, it's wood. It just has some carbon fiber elements. One being the fretboard is uh, a piece of carbon fiber and it has a carbon fiber woven sheet on the back of the guitar. <laughs> Last but not least is my Alvarez Dana Scoop. This is another guitar that I did a review many years ago, and it is definitely strange if you can't tell. So newer subscribers of the channel that may have not seen the old archive videos may not know this guitar. It doesn't pop up very much, although it's one of my oldest guitars. This guitar is made in Korea and the electronics are no longer original. I replaced everything, including putting some Seymour Duncan pickups in there. The middle pickup is strange because it's not a neck pickup, it's a middle pickup. This guitar is just a crazy guitar and I've had it for so long that I just don't ever see it leaving my collection of guitars. And um, I should probably get it out time and time again. It's really covered in dust because it's been sitting around so long in a case. Um, one of the interesting things, if you notice how they mount the pickups, they look like they're direct mounted in but there's uh it's just a lot different than what you're seeing there's no actual cutouts on the sides that's because i took the back plate off to show you everything's kind of routed from the back and installed from the back the pickups come in through the back to the front this was definitely a strange guitar for the time it was only out for a few years and again i have a an interesting video about that i'll put a link right here like i said all these felt strange to me and they definitely seem to get the strangest reactions when i pull them out or when i have them or use them so on that note i thought i would just share those are my five strangest guitars and let me know if you like doing this kind of video i never know if it's interesting to pull out stuff from the collection and show it if it is give it a thumbs up let me know that you like it and i'll continue to make content like this if you're new to the channel you can always subscribe to see other videos and as always i want to thank you so much for your time and until the next time know your gear